gonna we're gonna attempt to do this tonight. I told Eric I only got about 15 minutes, and uh, he's just gonna take over and do what he does from there. But uh, I've never been known to stop at 15 minutes, so <laughs> he's got a lot of grace for me. And uh, the I'm car's gonna, got about 30, so you're good. Right. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to I'm gonna try to get through this thing and come to you at a little bit different perspective um, tonight. We're still talking about what am I training to become, and if I had a name this or label this is I'm training to become inspired, um, to be inspired, to become inspired, to live inspired. And the reason I say that, I just attended this business meeting in California. I was there Wednesday and I was there on Thursday. And uh, <clears throat> it was a big regional meeting for us, one of the big department stores or the big box stores here in town. Um, it was a big regional meeting, so we ended up going. And it was just incredible to me what happened at the meeting, I don't know if they intended it for it to be spiritual, but to me I got some spiritual, um, just some spiritual wisdom, some spiritual knowledge out of it. And we're just going to talk about that. So uh, in this business meeting, basically they begin to talk about the value um, of the product or of the merchandise that we were selling. So basically what they talked about on the product was how it separates us from another person. And just stay with me for just for a second, just for a couple minutes, just... Let me lay this out for you, and I'll, I'll definitely tie it back in. I'm not going to sell you anything that you don't want, but uh, <laughs> let, me just, let me just get you to where I want you to go. Um, so, so how the product separates us from the, from the guy next door or from the other products around. Also, the, the value of the product was um, the differences and the worth, and the, and the key word there was value. They kept saying this word value, the value, value, that we have this value that other people don't have or our competitors don't have. And they also said this, that the value was also in the fact that the company that we represented, had very, they were very credible, had been well established, had been in the game for a long time. So, number one, if you guys are taking notes, I don't know if you're taking notes or not, but uh, number one would be value. Number two, the amount of resources that we had. I realized that we had so many resources as a company. Um, we had flyers, brochures, door hangers, car wraps, whatever we wanted to do and brand these people, this, this particular um, brand on our vehicles, on anything that we had, they would actually do it for us and do it for us for free. So I don't know if you, any of you guys in business or free is good, <laughs> right? Free is good. So they just begin to tell us all this stuff and um, the, 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 just the, the class or the, the quality of the brochure or the quality of stuff was better than what we could do for hundreds and even sometimes even thousand dollars. I don't know if you guys ever try to develop something, write a flyer or a brochure with colored pictures and verbiage and all this stuff. So they begin to, to, to tell us how much uh, resources we had um, in our grasp or, or had the opportunity to take advantage of. One of the other things they, they talked about was um, the support that we had with them. So. The support was I can call and talk to the regional guy at any moment. I could I could call him any time during the day, and more than likely he's going to pick up the phone. It wasn't like he was, even if he wasn't in town, he would still answer my question. I had uh, email access to him. He was very accessible to answer questions. And even, at, even with that, he was available to come on sales calls with me. He would fly in and do product knowledge with us. If whatever we didn't know, he was willing to help us with. So I thought that was incredible that he was available, right? I had a bunch of support. And lastly, the opportunities. The, the opportunity for the select group of people or individuals or business owners or businesses, the exclusivity of it, and the fact that they protected my territory. Okay? And I'm just coming at this as a business angle. And let me just talk to you for a minute. I just want to switch gears. So four things that we talked about was value of product, realizing our resources, support, and opportunity. So let me talk to you about this. We're talking about getting inspired tonight. Um, let me just go here with you. If we talk about value, let's bring this back to the, to the things of God. If we talk about value and, and, and to, to really get you to understand your value, is that your value is that Christ was willing to die for you. Mm -hmm makes you very valuable, makes you invaluable, makes you priceless, right? If Christ was willing to die for you, your, 
you find value in that. So if you came in this room tonight not knowing, or came to this, to this place tonight not knowing your value, I want you to know you're valuable. You might not be valuable to the guy next door. You might not even be valuable to your wife right now. Or maybe even to your kids, but there you have value, and that's in Christ. Christ says that you're valuable. Number two, let's talk about resources, the, the, the things that I have access to. What resources do we have as Christians, man? We can go on and on. We have the local church. i got pastors, friends, ministry partners, Tuesday night men's groups. Right? I've got plenty of resources, all kinds of resources that are just there for me to tap into. Books, creatures, TV. Now we're on YouTube. We're recording this thing so you can watch this very thing at night. You can watch it tomorrow. You can watch it whenever you like. You can see ministers all over the world on any, you know, most Christian stations. We have resources and access to resources. And guess what? The quality is really good. The quality is actually great on a lot of these resources. We have more resources than anybody, than any generation ever had resources. So I want to tell you this, I want to tell you Proverbs 1 5 says this, a wise man will hear and increase learning. Access to resources, a wise man will hear and increase learning. Number two, Bible says this, Matthew 16, 18, it says, I will build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail against mm-hmm. it. It's talking about resources. Okay? Got plenty of resources. How about support? If I was to take this from the, the business model, the support that I have, this is the support. You could call on Jesus whenever you want. You could call, him on, call on Him in the good times and in the bad times. You can call on Him whether you're inside the house or outside the house. You could call on Him whether you're inside the car or outside the car. You could call on Him in the grocery store. You could call on Him everywhere. You're talking about support? You have support. And it's Jesus everywhere you go is support. He's going to support you everywhere you go. You guys ever heard that song? When you need me, call me. No matter where you are. Right? Wherever you are, no matter where you're at. Right? I didn't do the song any justice, but you guys. He sounded just like Marvin Gaye. You got it. I didn't do it any justice, man, but you got it. Right? Make you laugh. Good. So the support, all I have to do is call on them. Joshua 1 9 says, be strong and courageous. I said this, be strong and inspired. <coughs> For the Lord will be with you everywhere you go. I'm talking about being inspired, being courageous. Be strong and inspired. I kind of just added that. That's the Anthony McDaniel version in my Bible. Um, <laughs> be strong and inspired and the Lord will be with you everywhere. Right? You're talking about support? I mean, even better than my rep. My rep, i got to call him. He's got to fly in for me to be able to talk to him face to face. Jesus is accessible morning, noon, night, middle of the night, majority of the time, middle of the night, right? 12, 1 o'clock in the morning, everybody else is sleeping. You're still thinking, oh my goodness, Lord, how am I going to make this happen? What do I need to do next? How am I going to close this deal? How am I going to deal with that co-worker because they're acting crazy? How am I going to do this? What am I going to do? Am I gonna do and, and you're still up and you're thinking and you have support. Jesus is there, right? Jesus is there. And not to mention the support of everybody else around you. Friends, pastors, teachers, relationships that you've developed. But the key is that the support that you have is Christ. How about opportunity? This is my favorite one. To live a life that will impact many. It's my opportunity. Mm-hmm. My opportunity in Christianity, if I was to give you a Christianity sales pitch, right? If I was to get you to be inspired about Christianity, would be that you were able to change the lives and impact people for not just generations to come, but for eternity. That would be my sales pitch to you. If I was selling Jesus for free, as Angel says. <laughs> <laughs> so hopefully he watches that he laughs. But, uh, to inspire people around you. I don't know about you, but it feels good to inspire people around you when they look up to you because you're being you. Yeah. Not because you're trying to be somebody else. Right? I've tried that. doesn't work, man. You end up yeah, just frustrated. To do what no one in your family has ever done. Opportunity. 
don't know about you, man. I didn't listen. I didn't have a dad. I don't know what it's like to be a dad, but I'm a dad now. Father of four, right? Married to my only wife. She'll be my only wife. I have a lot of guns, so she might kill me eventually. But <laughs> she'll be my only wife. I declared that, man. Right? I just make sure my life insurance policy is it more than what I make every year. <laughs> <laughs> Give you some pointers, you know what I'm saying? Right? Got to keep it real, man. If I'm worth more dead than alive, there's incentive. <laughs> it's the same. It's the same, man. I gotta, gotta keep it, gotta keep it real, man. Gotta keep it real. Ah, uh, so opportunity. Jesus says this in John 10. And I know these are right. I actually looked these ones up. Well, you guys are still crucifying me for the other day. Um, John 10:10 10, 10 says this, and this is John, not one, two, or three, but John. Okay. Jesus came to give me life and what? Life more abundant. Opportunity. He came to give me life and life mm -hmm. more abundant. What else the Bible says? It also says in Romans 8.28, it says, And we know all things, not just some things, but all things work together to the good of those that are called according to his purpose, right? So, God came to give me life, life more abundantly. And all things work together for my good. For my good. That's my opportunity. That's my opportunity. So in closing, as I, I think I'm going to finish strong, bro. I think I'm going to finish early and everything. You might, you might even get the opportunity to go for it. <laughs> so throughout this whole business meeting, this is what I found out. That the company that I represented hadn't changed. They were the same company I began with three years ago. They hadn't changed. The same flyers were available. The same marketing tools were available. The same resources were available. Okay? They were still, I still had plenty of support. Okay? I had plenty of opportunity. But you know what I realized? That I didn't take advantage of the opportunity. Mm -hmm. I didn't take advantage of the support. I didn't take advantage of all the resources that this company <coughs> offered. As a businessman. So what happened? The only thing that happened was my perspective changed. Because I realized now I have access to all this stuff. That I didn't realize I had access to all this stuff before. How does that relate to me as a Christian? I want you to realize that you have access to all this stuff. That you don't have to do it alone. You don't have to feel alone. You don't have to feel like it's all your fault. You don't have to try to make up your own material. It's all there. It's in the book. Right? If you're teaching a class, you don't have to make up the material. It's in the book. Right? For those of you that feel pressure to be a dad, to be a father, to be a husband, listen, it's his deal, man. All I have to do is say, God, I'm yours. It's your deal. It's your deal. I don't have to try so hard. I don't have to beat myself up when I fail. I don't have to do any of that. I have access to these resources. And now the fact of the matter is I just got to tap into them. One more thing I realize, and I'm done. I realize this. <clears throat> I realize that companies in this business seminar that had the most success were the ones that were most committed. The ones that were most committed to the program. To the system. So what can we equate that to? Me as a man, as a Christian, I gotta ask myself daily, am I in this thing? Do I straddle the fence? Right? And I say fence because that's what I do, but do I straddle the fence? Right? Fences are great barriers, man. Good fences make good neighbors. Right? There's a lot of reasons to have a fence. Right? For privacy to keep people out. Right? Keep other dogs from crapping on your yard. There's a lot of reasons to have a fence. But my question to you is tonight, are you straddling the fence? Mm -hmm. Or are you all in? Because again, the companies that were most successful were the ones that were most committed. And I'm not saying you're perfect, and you have to be perfect to do this thing. But you do have to wake up every morning and make a decision. Yeah. To say, God, I'm in. This is Vegas. I'm all in. 
Right? All my chips are in the center of the table, Lord, and let happen what's going to happen. Right? I'm going to love you with everything. I know I'm not perfect and I'll never be. But today I declare that I'm yours, Lord. I want you to increase in my life as I decrease. And I got one last scripture for you, and I'm done. Philippians 3.12 says this. It says, not that I've already attained all this. Not that I've arrived. Not that I've got there. It says, but I do this. But I press on. Yes. I put in, I am inspired to take hold of that for which Christ Jesus took hold of me. So not that I got it all together already. And not that I have it all figured out. But I do this thing. I get inspired to go towards the things of God rather than away from the things of God. So I'm fully committed. I'm fully committed. So in order to be successful in the things of God, we got to be fully committed. The people that are fully committed are going to be the one most successful. Mm. To me, it's that simple. If this was my sales pitch, this is what I would tell you. Because I saw it proven in this business seminar that the companies that are, were more successful than I was were the ones that are more committed to the plan. And the plan for you is good things, not for bad things, for future and hope, to prosper you. That's the plan. Right? But the question is, am I fully committed? And I think as men, I think i got to ask myself that question often. It's not a one and done thing. It's not a, I got saved 12 years ago and I'm good and I'm going to heaven. You might believe that and some of you might not. We're not going to get into that part of it. Because some of us believe it and some of us don't believe once saved, obviously. But my question to you is as a man and being successful in Christianity, am I fully committed? And do I ask myself that daily? And I can tell you our decisions and our actions a lot of times show us our commitment. And I'm not beating you up, don't get me wrong. A lot of times we have intentions that are good. Right? You ever seen American Me? <laughs> <laughs> I was going to sing the song for you, but I figured I'd just point it out, right? I'm just a soul with intentions that are good. I don't want to be misunderstood kind of thing. But so often that's who we are, right? That's what happens, man. Right? My intentions are to treat my wife right, but you know what? And she said something, I just went off. Mm. Right? My intentions were mm. to... Uh, you know, take care of my kids and to raise them up right, but something happened, man, and, you know, there's just this wall between us, and I'm not sure how to get through it anymore. And I try with my own power, and it doesn't work. Right? But every day, am I fully committed to the things of God? I'm not saying you're not going to have problems, because you are. But the question is, am I fully committed? You're going to go through some stuff. That's what Bible says. I'm not, you know... Whether you're doing the right thing or the wrong thing, you're going to go through some stuff. But it's nice to know you have some support. It's nice to know you have some resources. It's nice to know that you have some value, regardless of what people have said about you in the past. That you have value, regardless of what they said to you when you were a kid. And I can talk about that because I was another statistic that just happened to make it out of the neighborhood. And you never know that now by looking at me, but I was. But God's a miracle worker. That's what He does. He performs miracles mm -hmm. daily. If you asked me if I was to be here years ago, I would have told you you're crazy. I didn't think I was going to live past 18, let alone be up here speaking about God's Word and His goodness and His grace and His mercy and <coughs> how good He is. I would have told you you're crazy. No way. I was a gun toting fool. I was just, I was foul, man. And I knew it. And I liked it. So that messes up all your theology because sin is supposed to be bad. But the <clears throat> thing is, Bible says sin is fun for a season. And the thing is that God changed me. Mm -hmm. One day at a time. Did it happen quick enough? No. <laughs> Never fast enough, man. <clears throat> I, I haven't made money fast enough. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I haven't made progress in marriage fast enough. I haven't made progress in 
friendships fast enough. It seems like I lose money fast enough. <laughs> you know what I mean? It seems like that doesn't take that doesn't take much to lose money fast enough, but it never comes fast. Enough. Right. Right. I never get to my destination fast enough. I just went to California. It took me three hours to get there, even though I was flying. I still didn't get there fast. No. Right. It might not happen fast. Enough. But the thing is, it's gonna happen. Amen. As long as you stay fully committed. Understand you're valuable, you have resources, you can contact them anytime. You're good to go. Good to go. With that, I'm done. <coughs> I'm done. Yeah.